This video is sponsored by Rococo, which is even crazy that I get to say that. Hi, I'm Denzel. I'm a guy. I animate things. I made Animal Crossing movie. And some time ago, Coco turned to me and said, wow, we really like your stuff, dude. And I said, cool, man. Can you send me a suit? And they said, sure. And they did. So come along with me down the Rococo River as I share some workflows for working with mocap. So you got your suit, realized that it didn't really fit, back and forth with customer service to get a larger fit, got a battery bank, and a second router because your primary router isn't recognized. Finally getting your larger suit after FedEx held it hostage for a week, powered, on network, updated, and calibrated, we're finally here in Rococo Studio. Whew. Let's take a tour. On our left here, we can make a new actor here, give it a name and some color. And we also want to make sure that our height measurement is correct as well. It's vital for the quality of our capture. And to get our suit attached to our actor, we just drag it onto it. Super easy. We can also import our own custom characters if we'd like, so long as they're rigged and exported in a format that it accepts. And when it's in, just drag your character over the skeleton and voila. Recording is actually really simple. Just give a clip a name down here and hit the big red button and do an action. And that's it. In the span of me explaining it, we've captured some action. Now, something to note about the Rococo suit is that it's an IMU-based system, meaning it captures your motions through an array of gyroscopic sensors around your body. It's only really capturing and interpolating rotation data from your limbs. Very cool, very convenient. But it does come with some pros and cons. Big pro being limitless space. space, space, space. So long as your suit has a solid connection to Wi-Fi, you can record any type of action anywhere. Up the stairs, behind the closed door in your bathroom, outside, on a field, doesn't matter. It'll track what you're doing. Con being, because it's calculating all of this on sensor data, is subject to this non-negligible amount of drift at times. Sometimes it'll get body drift, sometimes it'll get arm drift, sometimes it'll get pose drift. It loses its accuracy over time. So the recalculate pose hotkey is one you're gonna wanna learn. A little frustrating, sure, but this is why we do cleanup anyways. And Studio does take that into account, so there are some tools to help clean things up in here. Rococo also offers a thing called a Coil Pro. It tracks your gloves and uses that as a sort of ground truth that is then used to better calculate the full body or something along those lines. At the time of this recording, I don't have one yet, so I don't know how great they are, but uh, it is a nice looking box. Yeah, just like, look at that box. Anywho, so we have our recording. Let's do some cleanup. Yeah. Once a recording is finished, Studio tries to detect where our footsteps happen and uses those holds to further refine our capture, these green and blue circles under the feet. It does a pretty good job, but if it's not perfect, we can refine it a little more. All we have to do is drive these little boxes left and right to the beginning and ends of our steps, and Studio will recalculate the pose based on these changes. So I'm just gonna give it some love and give it a cleaning. Would you look at that? Animation. This looks good enough to be good enough, so we're gonna export it. If we select our clip and click on over to the export tab, we get some options for how we want our data to export. For the most part, the defaults are pretty fine. I typically use the Mixamo skeleton since it's a pretty clean skeleton, and AutoRig Pro, the rigging and retargeting system that I use, works quite well with it. Give it a name, give it a destination, and bake it out. And there it is, data. Thank you, Rococo Studio. Next up, I'm gonna open up Blender and import my character model as well as my mocap data. Be sure to click this force connections and automatic bone orientations. This just fixes it so that the bones don't shoot out of the weird orientations. The next thing we're going to do is scale our mocap armature to the size of our model. But if we scale our armature just by itself, I've always found it to break the animation in weird ways. So instead, I usually just parent the armature to an empty and scale the armature that way so it's not destructive. I usually scale it up or down to about my character's shoulder height. And honestly, that's all the preparation that's kind of needed for this. Just import and scale. This will help minimize some issues with retargeting. So retargeting. Rococo does offer a free Blender add-on for retargeting. But I'm not gonna lie, I don't really use it. 
My characters are rigged using Auto Rig Pro, and Auto Rig comes with its own set of retargeting tools that works really well with the rigs that it generates. So I'm going to come over to its menu, select my target rig, select my source armature, and build the bone list. And Auto Rig comes with a bunch of bone list presets for a variety of different skeletal structures. This is why I exported it as a Mixamo armature out of Rococo, so that in here I could just pick the Mixamo IK legs and FK arms option and have everything else set up for me. I can even click this preview bind only button, which lets me preview the retargeting to see if it looks good before baking it all down. And it looks pretty good, so let's bake it all down. I'm going to go ahead and click this retarget button, and our animation is now on our character rig. Yeah. Now we can move on to the funnest yeah. part in the entire process, refining. Refining is just straight up animation. Just instead of creating one from scratch, we have this pre-baked base to work off of. A base that we can do anything with. We can extract poses to use as a base to rebuild an animation with. We can identify, smooth out, or address any problems in the motion. We can accentuate or exaggerate poses, or we could just leave it and call it a day. You know, no right way or whatever. I like to use the animation layers add-on to add additional layers to make tweaks on. All this thing really does is repackages and streamlines the NLE editor. I often don't get great finger animations, so I usually redo those. Sometimes the body moves just a bit too, like a, like flappy looking, like this person in a mascot kind of feel. I try to reduce that as much as I can using things like Gaussian Smooth and the Butterworth Smooth here. This bar here that I'm clicking on is actually another add-on called Animate Pro. It decks out your animation toolbar up here with a whole bunch of new tools. Tools like time warping and global offsetting and curve sculpting and motion paths and like just a crazy amount of stuff that you can use to make animations with or also refine with. I'm just gonna let this play out. All that I'm really doing is using additional layers to add tweaks to the overall posing, the overall sharpness, refining some of the silhouettes, fixing some of the hands, I'll actually fixing all the hands, making it feel stronger, making it feel snappier, really capturing the essence of a galactic donut throwing a handful of nothing, you know? Sooner or later, when it all starts looking pretty good and I find less and less things to tweak, it's usually when I call it done. And that's the general workflow. Motion capture unlocks quite an array of possibilities. Being able to use yourself as a digital actor is really powerful. Granted, your results are limited by like what you or your actor is like capable of doing, but we're also living in a hell of a time where I could just slap on a suit, do a little dance, and then see that on a character in like 10 minutes. It's definitely not perfect, but it's like super useful. And whenever I can, I try to find more ways to use it. And if you want one too, I have a link in the description where you can get 40% off the creator bundle, which although this is sponsored, is unironically like a bonkers deal uh, because it's the same one that I bought. You get the suit, gloves, and a year subscription to Studio Pro for the price of like just the suit. So if you're ever interested in picking one up, now's a pretty good time. Same thing with any of the mentioned add-ons, they're all linked as well below. So check them out if they are up your alley. And that pretty much wraps things up for this video. I also have a Patreon if you want to help support the arts. Proceeds go towards getting a Coil Pro Man, look at that. and just generally supporting me as a creative. Uh, but if you don't, that's cool too. I hope you learned something. And if you didn't, I respect your drive in getting to the end of this video. You get a cookie.